Now, the job we're going to do today is a bit different, and that is, we have a sea of blue here beside me. We have all our parlour pipes through to one side to make a bit of room here, and I'm already just setting out a couple of mats here on the ground to see how the whole thing goes together, but we have a set of mats that I bought quite a while ago, and it's been sitting in the shed ever since, to be honest with you, I just never got round to doing anything with them. But mats for my parlour, just simply for a wee bit of comfort in my legs. I do suffer with my back, not actually so much anymore, I'm actually lucky, it seems to be well on the mend. But about 10 years ago, I started suffering with back problems. A lot of it was standing, believe it or not, on concrete. The standing on concrete, day in and day out, is hard on the legs, and I'd notice now, now that I'm about to turn 30, I notice now my legs do be sore at the end of the day, and I notice a lot of YouTubers, a lot of Instagrammers, a lot of people, farms that I would visit, and a lot of them have mats now on their, on their pit floors, and you do spend quite a while every day standing. Before I do any get further, um, these are my own mats I bought them myself. Well, it's not the first mats we've ever put in this parlour. This parlour was built in 2008, 2009, and we put mats in about three years after that. Completely different to these, but before this video ends, I'll show you them mats. I'm just looking up now, this thinking, do I have any? I do, I think I still kept a couple of wee bits that were off cuts, and I'll show you the mat we have and why we took them out only after a few months. They were an absolute disaster. These are the mats we have chosen. A laminated mat, they're from Easy Fix. And um, that seemed to be the only one I could find that was suitable for this kind of thing. And uh, seems to be the one everybody else is using, so I just went and I bought these. We have 16 mats in total. And we're just started to put a few of them down here now. I've put a few down after milking, just roughly to see what way we're going to have to cut them. And um, so this side here, they come with end bits like this. Helps go up again the wall, but this side here we're going to have to cut because it's obviously too long. Uh, it's not going to be straightforward. Definitely not because we have a trench that comes across here which catches the water and runs then into the manhole here where there's a pump underneath the ground that pumps it away into our tank. So we can't cover that, that has to be left open. I don't want to leave a hole in the ground because you'd trip on that or you'd always have to step over it. I want to have the whole thing flush. So I have an idea that might work for that and work really well. So I got a couple of good tips from a few people who has these and how to fit them and make the job a lot easier. Um, one of which is have a good Stanley knife that has a new blade in it, even put a new blade in it for the occasion. One other thing that was mentioned to me, and I think it was quite important, and I hope I remember it right, but that is to measure once, cut twice. Lift this back up again anyway. Well there we are, there's our first mat in, once you get started it should be quite easy now, it should be just a matter of latching them into the I don't like the way the standing knife cuts it, it just doesn't give a nice clean edge no matter what way you go with it, So, and it doesn't go the whole way through it so we might have to change that one So yeah, Stanley knife, wouldn't use it. Look at that there, versus this here. Now, we get to this trench, this is the problem. This trench is very important, it's very important to leave it uncovered, because this catches all the run coming down, and then it's sloped into this drainage point here. I had to wonder what way to do it, do I bring this across here like this, leave it like that, but you couldn't leave that open like that. It would catch your feet and you'd trip on it and everything. That just wouldn't work. And then this would bend down and ah, it just wouldn't be right. So I came up with a wee bit of a solution. Got myself one of these guys here, which is just an ordinary one of those drainage grates. It normally comes with a bottom on it, but you can buy them without the bottoms. And that would sit just lovely right across there. If I cut it right and bolt it down into the ground, right up against this. Now I have to add a wee bit onto that with an end piece, which I can do now in a second, just something like this here. 
and put that across like that and put this up against it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there now. I haven't got that fully put in because I have to cut this. It's overlapping a wee bit. And then I have to bolt the whole thing down. But I don't want to do that just yet. That there, once I put the straight edge in, that gives me an edge to go up again now at my next mats. And what I want to continue doing today is putting the rest of the mats the whole way down. And then we come back to this and fit the whole thing down right. All right, so I just laid that line there. And that literally took me two or three minutes because they just linked together. And the end pieces were already on them, so it was only a matter of putting the jigsaw together. Then we get to the fun part, which would be around these steps and pipes. Right, we're surprisingly getting on very well. And that's everything fitted in. It looks well. Oh, man on the feet. It feels good to walk on, which is what it's all about. Uh, now we're at the awkward part, but... We only have two mats left. This is going to be quite awkward now. There's no doubt about it because a lot of measuring, a lot of things to cut around. You don't want to leave any gaps because gaps will let dirt in and dirt will go under the mats and so on and so on. So you want to get it as tight to the wall as possible. So this is going to require quite a bit of cutting, quite a bit of measuring. I did say that right, didn't I? 34 and a half inches. Yep, I still work in inches. 32 and a half inches, isn't that right? 42 and a half inches, yeah. Wasn't it? Ah, my pen. Won't work. There you go. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to have to measure for this guy here. So I have to cut a notch out of this mat for it. Right, first fit. And no, I didn't cheat. I dare say it, but this has worked out quite easy. This bit, I don't have a mat for this because this mat here, I had a little bit of a boo-boo and I cut it wrong. I'm not lying, I cut the thing wrong and I don't think I can use it for this. I took a slight little bit off it. I'm gonna have a look to see what I can do, but she's gonna cut it into sections. But I think I'm just gonna have to buy a new mat. Right, well, I'm trying to come up with a plan here where I mightn't have to get another mat. And I want to get this finished to kind of this evening. And this might actually do the job. So what I've done here, if I put an end in on this, and it means the joint will be in a different place. And I've kind of cut this mat. You can see all the lines I have. I designed it in a way that it might actually work. I'm probably going to end up with a wee gap here. And I'm going to give it a go, see what this turns out like, because it might actually work and get the job finished today. Right, are you ready to place your bets? Look at all the bits. But anyway, I have this cut for the pipe. Fit around the pipe. Oh, there's lots of room for error here. Too tight. And that's not a bad thing. It's just too tight at the minute. Oh. Let's pipe look around this. Very, very close. Uh, it's just a wee bit off here, but that can be filled with silicone. It's not much. I have a wee bit to cut off here on this one. It's a wee bit gapped out, but I could push it from this side over to close that gap. Shove a bit of rubber maybe in there, actually, a wee bit of rubber mat. But here, just needs a bit taken off it because it's just got too much pressure on it. So a wee bit to be cut off here. And we may not be too bad. All right, have a wee look. I cut one of the dovetails myself because that was just a flat piece just to join into that last bit there and that's it around the step around the pole I fitted a wee bit in there just to fill that wee gap in there and to me that's perfect that will never move <laughs> See the way it's sitting very uneven there at the minute. Well, to fix that, lift it out a second. 
I'm gonna put this lad in here. I'm gonna set that lad just there like that. And now I'm gonna sit him back down. And that's also gonna hold the mat. See, the mat won't fall down either. So when I have this in place and know that it's sitting right, and I'll dot it with well from this side. And it's not blocking the water. It's up in the air. It's not blocking the water from getting away. And that will solve that problem. I'm not going to over tighten it. Because it only needs to grip. So us see it there. Well. Girls have been here with me now tidying up and they've all the stuff gone and cleared up because we're getting very close to milking time. But there it is, there's it finished. There's the grate that we put in. I bolted it together here and that's to hold the whole thing together. That's really solid now. It's just bolted down there and bolted down over there. It's all got level and everything. I've propped on the need to make sure that it's level. So that worked out with an absolute treat crossing there. It means there's nothing there for you to catch a foot on the trip. And hopefully, these will stand the test of time. I don't know much about them, to be honest. Some of them do discolour after a while, but I was told that the laminated ones last a bit longer, so hopefully they will. I don't really mind. The floor had got very dark anyway. The concrete does get stained with that old algae. No matter how much you wash it, it still stays kind of stained now. It was dark in colour, so it lifts the colour a wee bit. And they're an expensive mat, yes, but if it saves the legs over a long period of time, hopefully it'll be worth it. Now I did say that I was going to show a mat that I had in before and I was positive that I had a piece of it up in our attic. The girls cleaned the attic out early in the summer and I can't find any of the pieces left so they must be thrown out. But it's very easy for me to explain the type of ones that they wear. They weren't like these, they weren't rubber, they were a hard kind of plastic and the water ran down through them and the purpose was then the water would run underneath and away. You might see door mats, black door mats that look sort of like them. Um, but they were no good because I found no matter how much you try to wash them, if a cow dung down on top of them, you can't get the water away. There wasn't enough clearance underneath to get the water away. So they were an expensive mat when I bought them. Nearly every bit as expensive as these, but I thought they were going to be the bee's knees. But they weren't. After about six weeks in, I had to pull them up because the smell in the parlour was outrageous. Just milk falling down as your cows were calving and you were washing out jars and things and it just, it never could get away and it was building up and eventually all the holes was full, it was just rotten. I actually sold them off to a friend of mine who works in a garage and he put them in underneath the floor of a garage. I didn't actually see the job he'd done with it but he told me it was going on the floor of a garage. I don't know how he got on since with them, I haven't seen them but it probably would do his job. There was no real wetting, it was just to keep his feet off the concrete. But for here where cows are doing the number twos down on top of it, didn't like them, really didn't like them. So then I didn't bother with anything for a long time until now. And they've been sitting here for the past, oh, they're a long time sitting out in that yard and I just never got round to doing it. But you know what, it was glad now to have that ticked off the list. That's that job done, on to the next one. Well, there's only one reason why you put silage in front of barriers this time of year, and that means cattle are going in. But not actually the cattle that will be in this house for the winter are heifers, which are over there. They're the animals that we're going to have to get in now at the minute. Now, these heifers are coming home, but for now, what I will do is I'm just going to bring them in and put them in here tonight. 
Uh, might leave them in there actually a couple of days. But then tomorrow or the next day, the girls will be here to help me. And then all we have to do, let them back out of the shed, run them up onto the trailer and bring them home. I'm going to set my gates up. I'm going to move my reels down there and bring it up to this side of the gates so that I have a kind of a, a route for getting them out. So the task here is we're going to open our gates. You've seen us doing this before, but this time the fence is down there because this area here around the gate, I don't want it getting tramped. And this is a wet enough wee spot here, just on the low side. So what I'm going to try to do now is lift this reel, lift a few of the pegs without them hopefully busting through me because they're watching me there very eagerly now. And I'm going to bring it across. I'm going to hook it in here. And that way then when I open this gate, put a cord across here, technically they should follow me out. Quite easily, says he. There we go. Nope, I'm going to do something different. I have a pile of old string here. I'm going to tie it to the post here behind you. And I'm going to go across to where the heifers is and tie it to one of the pegs. And that way then all I have to do is loosen it here because I know by the way they're watching me, they're not going to give me time to get from there to there before they'll be through me. And if they get up onto that nice fresh grass, yeah, not a hope of getting them out today. Hopefully you should come out now and not give me any bother. They're always very suspicious when they get to these gates here. So I'm gonna to have to try to tip in behind them here and push them out, which mightn't go terribly well. And I certainly don't wanna run around the field because I can barely walk and I never mind run. You can see here, look, that's what I'm talking about. Look at my feet. That is how wet the ground is. It's absolutely saturated. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Now that one wants to go for a run. You go on ahead. I'm not following you. Worst thing you could ever do is let an animal fool you like that. She'll take you for a run around the field. Leave her there. Bring the other cattle away without her. And you'll find she'll not want to spend too long on her own. Yep. Oh, would you look at that? Oh no, you stay there, hey, no rush. No rush, you take your time. And there we go. She changed her mind. Fair play to her. So that's them in. And they look a lot bigger, thankfully, than they did when they left this house. Um, back a good few months ago now, you don't find the year going on, a funny early year that's in it. I'm glad to see the men out of the fields. Every farmer knows you don't, nothing as hateful as walking through fields and seeing cattle up to their knees, especially in silage ground. So they haven't done much harm really yet. And up here hasn't been grazed at all, nor probably won't be now for the rest of the year. We might get a grazing out of it in the springtime. It doesn't always be that easy to graze in the springtime because our fields Home and here takes a long time to dry out and by the time it's dry enough to let cattle in and graze it's usually time to get the fertiliser on and get the thing growing for silage so you don't really get a chance. That's one disadvantage on the heavier ground that we have here. It doesn't carry cattle for the length of time that maybe even a neighbouring farm might have. Every farm is different round here. You have hills, valleys, high spots, low spots and just every farm is different. But look at one benefit was when we had the drought we had grass but usually the ground, especially at home, once you hit that last week, second last week in October, that's it. Cows are inside, just no way that the ground will carry them. And you're better off, I always find, having that nice bit of grass in the springtime because it's more beneficial to them then rather than tramping fields to get an extra week, two weeks outside. Springtime, hopefully, won't be too far away. And that's when we hope to be able to hit some of the grass that we didn't get at now in the autumn tumble. And sorry, I've had a jump in here in the middle of that last clip you're watching because my battery died. Good old joys of a GoPro. But that's it, they spent their first night in. My calves is roaring in the background because it's meal time and they know it. That's why I'm over here, yeah, I'm coming to you. I can just see it there in the distance. A van after landing at our house. Our auger system is after breaking in two. The little by the spins inside the pipe is after completely breaking in two at the bottom of the meal bin and the meal bins only after being filled. And yeah, we have that to deal with today and today is Saturday, so what else would you be at? Anyway guys, thanks for watching, we'll talk to you in the next one.